In its heyday, this lovely old Ford St. Dexter was considered state of the art. It was built in 1954, just as the post-war agricultural revolution was getting underway. Since then, new varieties of high-yielding crops, grown with the use of chemical fertilizers, weed killers and pesticides, have all helped produce record quantities of food and shaped the rural landscape we see around us today. But the increasing cost of production has eaten into farmers' margins, encouraging them to cut back where they can, including their own farm workers, replacing them with more and more powerful pieces of machinery. All this extra power has come with its own price tag, not just in diesel, but the destruction and compaction of our soils. So much so that in some areas, yields are starting to fall. But now, a new revolution is stirring. One that is about scaling down rather than up. That treats the needs of individual plants rather than whole fields and one that involves not men and machines, but robots. So this is Roboti. She's built by a Danish company called Agrotelli, and she is, to all intents and purposes, a, a, a mini autonomous tractor. Roboti does her work, come rain or shine, at home farm Nacton, where they grow organic and conventional vegetables on the north bank of the Orwell estuary. We'd had it in our five-year plan, to adopt this kind of technology whenever it came along. Because of the organic cropping we've got, there's an awful lot of very repetitive hoeing and soil moving to do when crops are very young that this can do very well. For many years now, machinery has been getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and, and it's all because of the cost of the man and his time that sits on it. So if we can remove the man, we can go back to having smaller implements that do less damage to the soil. It's, it's an exciting step forward for us but it's, it's the first step on a, on a long journey, no doubt. And it is the greater precision robots offer farmers that is also getting attention. The ability to gather data on every plant in a field and treat its needs individually. These two robots do just that. Tom and Dick, made by the small robot company and on show in the Future Lab stand at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Tom scans the field, identifying unwanted weeds, and that data is fed into Dick. Dick will identify the individual weed and then zap it with electricity. So it's going to physically touch it with one of the probes that you can see on the robot. And then Dick is also a micro-spraying robot. So going out into a field and micro-dosing fertilizer, micro-dosing chemicals to give the plants what they need, but just in the amounts that, that, that's required. Investment in agricultural robotics is being fuelled by a growing interest in regenerative farming techniques. Regenerative farmers are trying to do things that are good for the soil. They're still working within the constraints of the existing machinery. They're still going to deal with these big machines and big heavy kit. Um, so we're going to more or less do away with that, um, with this technology. The second thing is we're going to support what's already happening, which is significantly reducing inputs, but taking it to that next level. So rather than uh, I think it needs some fertiliser, right, we'll dose the whole field with fertiliser, actually understanding exactly which parts of the field um, fertiliser is required and then just dosing those bits. We talk about this idea of per plant farming and I do think that over, over the next 20 years that will become the dominant form of farming system in the world. Everyone growing any crop anywhere in the world will be able to gather data on an individual plant and take action on that individual plant level. So it may well be that the agricultural worker of the future will be a technician, not just a driver. And the farm machinery we see working our countryside today will end up as museum pieces, just like the old Dexter.